Okay. And action. All right. Um, welcome to episode one of the podcast. I'm joined today by Brandon F. Ottenbacher. Mm-hmm. I pronounced that correctly. Absolutely. All right. A born in Michigan filmmaker, graduated in the summer of 09, mm-hmm. has been working professionally in the film industry ever since, yeah, which yeah. is incredible. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Started off in VFX on some really big projects like Real Steel with Hugh Jackman. Mm-hmm. And um, I see here you've worked on Jin and Spy Kids 4. I, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I did. Yeah. Really cool stuff. Yeah, and, bounced um, around quite a bit. <laughs> and has now settled into a comfortable position you're happy with yeah. as a production designer. Mm-hmm. So guys, without further ado, um, let's dive in into the beauty of production design and its importance. So let's talk motion picture. Um, hey, Brandon, um, real quick question. What do you think about production design? Oh, I love it. It's a, <laughs> I really love the uh, the red and black. Yeah. Any notes? <laughs> oh, I, I'm taking notes. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm you taking can give, notes. We, we, we take feedback. We take <laughs> criticism. So first off, um, what is a production designer? What is our... Uh, so yeah, a loaded question there. Um, you'll get a different answer, slightly different from anyone you talk to. Uh, so on smaller commercial and uh, uh, like smaller features... Um, sometimes the the line's a little blurred between uh, production designer and art director. Um, often uh, on smaller features, it's just an art director. You won't hear the production designer title. Um, but what it mainly is, is it, you lead um, art in every category. Uh, on a feature film, you are the bridge of the art department to the director. You usually work very closely to the director hand in hand. You are um, creating the vision of the story. Uh, and depending on what dir- kind of director you work with, um, depends on how much creative control you have. Uh, sometimes I've worked with a director that has a very uh, specific vision, and then it's your job to take that out of his brain and put it on the screen exactly how he wants it. And then I've had um, uh, my preference which I like a lot, uh, is um, when you work with a director who's more technical and uh, he'll give you a baseline and then you build the world. Um, but yeah, you, you are uh, in charge of every visual aspect. And then on big features, when you have an art director, um, that art director is... I was just correct your... Oh, yeah. Yeah, because your hair got poofed up. Okay. Yeah, just bring it over the top. No problem. Go. Make sure you look great. Yeah, better. Thank you. Um, if you work on a bigger feature, uh, usually there's a production designer and an art director. Your art director is like your second in command. They're uh, more in charge of your art department and you talk to them, making sure that they are taking care of all your, uh, all your visions. Um, and they also take care of a little bit more of the business side of things while you're uh, focusing fully on creative. So I, I want to go back a little bit to what you said um, is your preferred style. Mm-hmm. And that is like, walk me through that. Where is your inspiration and creative process really start to come into effect? Oh, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I get a lot of um, my visuals from uh, right when I get a script from the director. Uh, I'll read it um, and the visions will start. But uh, I work a lot with music. Um, I'll turn music on, I'll just listen to it, and uh, knowing the script, uh, I'll start piecing together a world. And um, that's that's really the first couple steps, uh, being a production designer too. Um, when you start building this world, a uh, lot of research, um, especially as uh, Wolfhound, the one feature film that um, I worked on, it's a period piece, uh, World War II film. And uh, that was extensive research. So how do you start research for a project like that? Because, I mean, World War II, there's so many films that are set in that period. Is right. that where you start? Or do you just look at, like, photo books? For um, so, honestly, when I first uh, started um, on that film specifically, uh, I just started reading uh, a lot just on everything from uh, what started it and all the way to the end. It was a, it was a lot of reading, um, a lot of online research, um, but then also, like you said, movies for sure, um, not only for the feel, but um, the overall aesthetic. You kind of pull a lot from it, you know, what works, what doesn't. Um, 
and I, I do that with a lot of films. I'll, I'll watch a lot of films and um, you kind of keep in the back of your mind things that you thought worked um, and you often make notes on what you would have done differently and uh, it helps you in, in films in the future. Actually, I think that's really interesting. I don't know if that's, so that's, I mean, that's something I do a lot with my own filmmaking is I take notes on what I could do differently, how I can do something yeah. and make it interesting. But I mean, so for production design, let's say you are looking at like a World War epic that you were doing. Right. Um, when you're doing the production design, are you specifically, production design rather, are you specifically looking at just the sets? Like how much are you, how much do you collaborate with other departments? Like, you know, wardrobe and all that. How does that play an effect into the design? Right. So, um, that actually kind of uh, shows the difference between a art director and a production designer on a, um, a bigger feature film too. Whereas the um, art director is really just focused on the art department and um, they work with you know, your, your props and your, your set dressing or your set dresser, um, where the production designer is uh, working with hair and makeup, they're working with wardrobe, they're working with the whole art department, they're working with everything. Um, they're, they're not only building that world you live in, but they're making that character, uh, you know, look as if they were in that world and vice versa. Um, you want all that to look cohesive and, uh, and, 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 and be working together. Uh, the worst thing you can do, um, the worst thing that can happen when you're a production designer is someone's watching a movie and they're like, oh, this looks like a set. You don't want that. Yeah, I think that could, that's, um, I think that is the beauty of why production design matters, why right. it's so important. You know, I, I, I think this is now where I want to pivot is when it comes to cinematography. There's mm -hmm. a great cinematographer, Rob Skates, mm -hmm. and he once said to me that sometimes people really confuse good production design with good cinematography mm -hmm. and that a lot of the times that's what elevates the image for sure and that's something i want to ask how much do you consider how your sets are going to be photographed is that something that's brought into the production process oh yeah so um when you're working with the director you're trying to get that overall vision uh through the characters and through through your your environment um but i also do a lot of talking to uh the dp not only for uh, lighting, lighting's uh, huge too, because um, uh, when you're dealing with set dressing, uh, you have a lot of practical lighting, and that's going to affect you know the lighting and the whole the whole environment as well. Um, but when talking to the DP, you, you want to know your framing. Um, perfect example, uh, easiest thing is when you're setting up a camera. If you're doing all this uh, elaborate set dressing on a wall, this beautiful, like, you know, mosaic tiles or, or, or framework. Um, and then they set up the frame and you never see it. You know, there's, a, you just wasted a bunch of time and money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And money. And that's that <laughs> talk to a producer. They don't want to, they don't want to miss that. So, um, but yeah, so, so when you're talking to DP, uh, lighting's huge, how much, uh, how much practical lighting is going to be in there. Um, the mood, atmosphere, uh, and then, yeah, like, uh, what's the framing look like and what do we want in that shot? So, I mean, that's, okay, let's, let's look, talk about that for a second. You know, there's, there's a ton of videos now on, online mm -hmm. of production designers yeah. you know, having, like, TikToks and Instagram yeah. where they're putting, like, free content out mm -hmm. there that's just super useful, super educational right. of how they, like, sometimes just print out vinyl stickers of tiles oh, yeah. to redo an entire floor. Yeah. Do you have any like tips or like, you know, what's the industry insights for mm -hmm. us of how you've snuck around to save costs to make things look better uh, than it could be? Yeah, it's funny that you said that actually because um, uh, when I first got into uh, production design, it, it's it's very easy to be like, yeah, everything has to be super authentic and and, and you would like that. You, you want um, everything to feel authentic, but depending on budget and time restraints, um, you also need to quickly figure out tips and tricks and, and how to cut corners and make it still look, you know, uh, S tier. So, um, there was a feature I, uh, worked on the summer last year, uh, in Maine that, uh, like you just said, we had to build a room, um, walls, floor, everything, 
in like two days. Um, and they wanted like wood floor. And not only did we not have time to go grab wood floor and lay it down, but um, it was going to be out of the budget. Um, so we had a slab that we got vinyl stickers and we just stickered all night long. Um, and uh, come morning, it looked like a wood floor. It, lo it looked perfect in frame. Um, you know, when you get up and close, you know, it's, it's a vinyl sticker. But um, if it looks good in frame, that's you did your job. And so now then, what is the biggest set that you've had the pleasure of constructing? Was it on Wolfhound? Um, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's funny. A biggest set uh, on Wolfhound for sure. Um, there were definitely other sets on other uh, films that were a lot more um, detailed and elaborate and, and took away more time. But on Wolfhound, since uh, there was some a lot of exterior uh, scenes, there was like, um, you know, uh, firefights in the, the forest and everything, um, plane wreckage scenes. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there was there was sets that were like a football field that, you know, were just throwing uh, shrapnel around and, and barrels and crates and, you so, know. So how do you like, oh, man, that's, that's so exciting. How do you, so you're given the script and you have to, like they mm -hmm. break down the, how the scene's going to work. You're mm -hmm. given the space of the, the set mm -hmm. and like how big it's going to be. Yeah. Do you immediately start drawing up plans? Do you go on like a computer mm -hmm. software? Do you have like a maquette built? Like what's your process to um, get something that big attainable? A little bit of everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it, it depending on uh, what the scene is and, and what the film is and what the time restraints look like. Um, yeah, I've, I've used just about all of it. Um, Wolf, and, and sometimes you're given... Um, more of a, a, a diagram and a, and a set plan. Uh, and sometimes they're just like, hey, here's the scene, make it happen. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I've built little models before, uh, reference. Uh, I actually started um, my, uh, my creative career in, uh, in illustration. So luckily I can, I can draw out um, some plans. So I, I do a lot of sketching. Uh, a lot of a lot of diagrams, a lot of notes, um, but uh, yeah, for that it, it was um, you kind of work with the director to on Wolfhound. We we set up yeah, like we 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 filmed in bomber hangars and and um, we were setting uh, literally had them move planes around um, and then setting crates and and and, and things around that. And actually, um, that you mentioned locations like that. It, production designer also works with locations. Um, we, we, we work a lot with, um, with a, a lot of departments actually. We're, we're one of those roles that uh, in the film industry, it's, it's easy for certain, um, certain titles to kind of stay in their lane and, and, and work with uh, one or two people to, so things move you know, uh, pretty fluid. But um, production designers, we we get to work with a lot of different departments, a lot of different people. Uh, I kind of like it that way. What would you yeah. say is your biggest challenges you've run into as a production designer? Um, uh, budget and timing. Budget yeah, and it's timing. a budget and timing is always. Uh, I mean, that's the film industry, though, um, and and it makes sense. Y you want to make the best film you can. The quickest you can, and with the least amount of money, um, always. I mean, that's that's how this industry goes. Um, and the way that a production designer has to approach it is, um, now I always try to say like, hey, our budgets, like we can't do this because of our budget or, or because of time. Um, I always try to, even if it sounds semi impossible to impossible. Um, my first question is always like, okay, so how do we do this? Um, and, and there are times that, you know, you get handed, um, unrealistic, uh, expectations and you, you kind of have to, uh, you know, go up to bat for your, your, your team and, and yourself and your, and your vision too. Um, but yeah, I always try to approach like, Hey, even though it seems impossible, how do we, how do we accomplish that? And, and so far that's always, always worked. We've, um, 
like, for example, Wolfhound, um, that film, I mean, it looks great. It looks like we, our budget was way higher than, than we had. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we got to get a lot of compliments on that. And when people do, uh, look up at the budget, I think it's on imdbd.com, but, um, it's, it's, they're surprised. They're surprised to see what budget we worked with. Um, and yeah, Lionsgate picked that film up and, uh, and they, uh, how does that feel? It, and that was, uh, that felt great. Yeah. Um, because that, that was actually the first feature film too, that I, uh, was production designer on. And, um, yeah, we didn't know who was going to pick it up. And, and when that came out, that was pretty big. Yeah. So how did you get Wolfhound? Um, my buddy Mike directed it and, uh, for years be beforehand, I actually worked on a lot of commercial work and music videos um, with Mike. So we we knew each other for for a while mm. before that. And then, uh, yeah, he um, years before we started filming, uh, he uh, mentioned it. He was like, uh, me and my my buddy Tim, um, who another writer on it. Uh, he's like, hey, we're we're looking at writing. Or finishing writing and 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 shooting this film, it's going to be my directorial debut. Uh, would you like to be a production designer? And uh, I was like, yeah, you know. And and sitting back, uh, I always enjoyed working with Mike. Um, and uh, it slowly started to dawn on me. I'm like, okay, so not only is it going to be my first feature film, but of course it's a period piece. And I'm like. <laughs> Period pieces are always going to be uh, a lot more work. Um, just research. I mean, you can't you can't leave anything out of that period uh, in in the shot. And was so. there a point on that? I mean, first off, you're a first time production designer mm -hmm. working on a big feature, an indie mm -hmm. feature, an, an indie feature. Right. And I mean, the pressure's there. What is the what's the biggest concern? What's the biggest thing that's giving you anxiety? It's you know freaking you out. Um. <sighs> It, it's funny. I was actually, maybe it's because I knew a handful of the people. Um, but I, I feel like I was, um, pretty, pretty calm going into it. Um, surprisingly, but, uh, it, it, then I think when it started creeping up, it was, it was almost a little bit of the anxiety comes in where I'm, uh, you know, you start, it starts to dawn on you how much responsibility you have. Um, and, uh, and it's, it's easy to over prepare. Um, sometimes you, you, when you, when you do that, you kind of, uh, you overthink things. Um, when, when you're really kind of going with it, uh, go with what feels right. Um, and, and things started falling into place. And when I started relaxing a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, I would love for that to help us then really diversify something you brought up at the beginning of the podcast, mm -hmm. and that is the difference between a production designer and an art director. Right. Because I think too often people confuse them. And yeah. I've spoken to friends who are in similar fields, and they mm -hmm. say that it always depends on budget how much those two roles, you know, collide. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. So, I mean, if you could help me just distinguish the difference of what makes them different from one another and then why they work so well together and how on smaller budget projects, those two roles end up being just one. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, smaller budgets, um, and smaller, smaller films. And then a lot of it, it, it kind of go, goes hand in hand with, um, commercial work and, and, and music videos. Um, so Production designer is is really um, when you have a, a good art director um, that's working with you, um, they're taking care of a lot of the uh, the budget concerns and making sure that it, props is is on and he and props master has his props ready to go and set dressing is where they need to be and and doing their thing and and all this looks good. Um, when you have a great art director, uh, when you're a production designer, your main and only focus is making sure everything is working. Um, it's, it's, it's nice when that happens, when you don't have that, uh, connection. Um, 
a production designer then has to worry about the business side of things or, uh, you know, getting someone somewhere at the right time. And, you know, it, did this prop come in? Did this set dressing? Do we have it? Uh, is this location working out? And um, when you have those problems falling on the plate uh, for the production designer, it takes away from time that they could be focusing on making sure that world's cohesive and lining up with the director's vision. Um, so now taking that into your own work experience. Um, yeah, guys, welcome back. A little technical difficulty here. Uh, let's talk motion picture. It yeah. happens, right? Yeah. That's filmmaking. It's that is great. filmmaking, yeah. It's not how yeah. bad it happens. It's how good you respond. Now you roll with it. Yeah. So um, where we stop is we're talking about the differences between an art director and a production design. Mm. And I think I want to segment that into what you believe makes good production design mm. and by comparison, what makes not so good production yeah. design. Um, so yeah, uh, great production design. Uh, when you're watching um, a film, uh, you that, that, that environment and, and the characters in it, you believe that world. Uh, they're cohesive, everything works. Um, you never doubt uh, its authenticity. Um, uh, yeah, everything works together. And, uh, and then the opposite, uh, if, if, if it's not working, um, characters don't look like they belong in their environments, uh, environments don't uh, look like they belong in that world, uh, it's not cohesive, everything, uh, it just doesn't work uh, visually, uh, emotionally, on any, any level. Yeah. And that's, oh man, that was such a great talking point. You were telling me about how you inform your um, creative process mm -hmm. and you were saying that the most important thing a young aspiring production designer or anyone trying to get into the field right. can do is travel and how that informs you how's traveling informed your process yeah um so yeah my advice if you can i, I know traveling is expensive um uh but it's it's experience um and it goes hand in hand um it, as a creative any creative um Travel as much as you can, meet as many different people as you can. Uh, you just broaden your horizons. Um, the more people you uh, you acquire their personalities, you you take everything from every meeting, uh, every place that you go to, collect those um, stories, those personalities, uh, those visuals, um, and uh, you can use them in your work. It'll reflect in your art. And so that was something I, I really liked about a comparison you made to like trying to set up a film for the 1950s, mm -hmm. how much of an effect the character in the story has on the environment that the production designer has to create. Yeah. And you were giving me like wonderful examples of that. I would love to know more about that and how that works. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, like uh, it, it, when you have someone, uh, maybe a mid-century family, a family in the, in the 50s, um, uh, it, it's funny you can see it in like Mad Men. Um, it, you have that that authentic family. Um, uh, you know their their clothes, the the their their surroundings, the neighborhood. Uh, you know if it's 1955, might scream 1955. But uh, those characters uh, might. Uh, he might have a watch from his grandpa, which was older. He might have, uh, you know, dishware in, in, in China in the, in the kitchen uh, from her grandmother. Uh, it's going to be older. Um, their car might be a hand-me-down. Their clothes might be a hand-me-down. Hand uh, you, you, people are layered. Their environments are layered. Uh, production design should be layered. Um, and you, you, it works, and it, and it brings... Uh, a quality to uh, these these characters and these environments that um, not only people can relate to, but it 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 draws um, uh, a familiar uh, emotion uh, and 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 a uh, people can yeah people can relate to it and and it brings you into the story more and so, and, and yeah it makes you care about these characters. So a good production designer essentially is just trying to find the authenticity in the piece. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's you know something I really um I never really considered because it you know that plays a lot. Mm -hmm. A character's lived experience will definitely inform how their room looks, right. how they dress, how their house looks, mm -hmm. all that. And yeah. it all comes down to inspiration. 
mm. and pulling from your inspiration from like travel and so forth. Um, are there any films that inspire you, any type mm. of production designer specifically? Uh, well, yeah, we talked about it before about, um, uh, I mean, Wes Anderson films, uh, they, they show a lot of, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a lot of, uh, visuals to look at. It's, a, it's, um, pleasing the eye, but also, um, it, it not only reflects, uh, his style, his production designer style, um, but, um, those atmospheres, uh, they are mirrored in their characters and vice versa. Um, uh, Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind uh, will forever be one of my favorite films. Great um, film, yeah. And 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 when you look at their um, not only their their environments uh, in and outside of their own their own head, um, it it reflects their characters uh, from the the sketchbooks they're they're using to uh, the knickknacks they picked up at flea markets uh, to their clothing, um, everything. Uh, works for that character um and and that's that's incredibly important in production design and when it comes to um you, you know your line of work I, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of misconceptions what would you say is the biggest yeah. one um yeah so uh even in the industry um i think uh sometimes um people are a little unsure on exactly um the difference between uh in an art director and a production designer, um, like we discussed. I, I think that um, sometimes not only people get those a little uh, crossed, but um, they are kind of unaware of exactly uh, how much falls on a production designer's shoulders and, and what we do need to um, not only be a part of, but supervise and, and kind of... Um, Kind of be on uh, an even ground and an understanding with a lot of departments, and uh, um, just to achieve uh, what we're trying to to do, uh, yeah, we need we need we need everyone working together and and everyone understanding um, exactly the the vision we're trying to go for. You know, I want to I really want to give you the soapbox here and mm -hmm. um, allow you to, in layman's terms, really just simplify production designer and then art director oh, yeah, just, yeah. just so like anyone who's listening who has never ever paid attention to the credits can go mm -hmm. okay from now on i know what that guy does and right what that guy does right so um and gal yeah yeah for sure um so on a on a, lo on a lower budget lower features um and and commercial work uh it, it's it's usually uh, it's one of the same uh, and i think that's actually why uh, some people probably get so uh understandably um confused but uh when there are both when there are bo both positions um an art director is uh mainly the person who is uh leading the art department team to accomplish the vision that is the production designers and the directors um the production designer and the director are working together to create that vision and then it is up to the art director to make sure that team is doing that. I love that. Mm -hmm. And for someone who's trying to get into your line of work, um, you know, you said something earlier that I really loved. I, I hit you with the, it's not who you know, it's if they know you. Right, right, right. And then you said. Uh, and and what they know about you. And yeah. what they know yeah. about yeah, you, yeah. which is, I think, the perfect missing piece of that puzzle. Right. Because at the end of the day, it is all word of mouth, and mm -hmm. more importantly, it's what people can see. Yeah. So yeah. for you know, aspiring production designers, aspiring people that are trying to get into that line of work, maybe mm -hmm. they're strapped in a different department and mm -hmm. they want to venture in, you know, what's advice you have for them? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's be prepared for the work. Um, and in the industry, uh, there's a lot of big personalities. You're, you're going to come across um, all walks of life. Uh, if you love what you're doing uh, and you have uh, an end goal, I mean, we're all in it together. We're, we're all trying to work together to create uh, the best final piece possible. Um, and you are going to run into um, certain people um, that make it dif difficult. Um, there are going to be bigger personalities that big personalities don't always uh, mesh well with big personalities. 
Um, some people will not get along, um, but uh, you got to make it work. And um, going back to uh, it's not who you know uh, always, but it, but who you know and, and what they know about you, um, you don't want to be known um, you know, as, as the, the jerk on set. Um, yeah, yeah. It pops up, (laughs) it pops up on a lot of sets. Um, it can hurt your reputation. Yeah. Yeah. The big personalities, um, don't always rub people the right way. And, um, yeah, just you, you have to understand that, uh, everyone's, you all, all have the same goal. Um, and if, if you, if you really focus on that, um, you know, just, just teamwork is essential you know, um, and, uh, and yeah, be, be as kind as possible. It, it kind of helps with, uh, we talked about it a little bit, um, where it helps if you've had a background, um, or if you, if you already were in like a PA position or a grip or didn't, doesn't matter what department, um, understand that they have a lot on their plate too. Everyone has a lot of work on a film set. Everyone has their hands full. Um, and with that understanding, uh, yeah, things need to get done within budget and in, in a timely fashion, but everyone's, you know, maxed out. Um, and with that understanding, uh, it, it's easier to be nicer to people and work together. Um, when people are just kind of butting heads, uh, nothing's going to get done. And that's exactly the opposite of what we want. So then how does, how does someone who started in VFX get, you know, roped into oh, yeah. production design? Um, yeah. So yeah, my road is, uh, slightly different than, uh, probably most pr- production designers. Um, there's always the latter, right? So, um, a lot of, um, a start as like a PA and you, you work your way up and depending on what, what department and what position you want, um, and, and I did do PA work. Um, I, I did a little bit of everything. But um, when I first got in the industry, yeah, I, I did post work. I uh, was a visual effects artist and I uh, did comp work, um, uh, did stereo conversion uh, when, when everything was in 3D. Um, and uh, I, I kind of got into that first because um, when I started my whole art journey um, through school, uh, I did illustration and animation. So I was big into the post work opposed to, uh, you know, the production. Um, but, uh, I really started narrowing in over time what I personally loved about film and what I wanted to do. And that was, uh, mainly build this world. Um, and, uh, and visual effects and the post work, Though I, I did enjoy it for a time, it wasn't where I wanted to be. Yeah, and I mean, you've done some really exciting stuff. I mm-hmm. mean, your work on Wolfhound, this mm-hmm. indie feature we spoke mm-hmm. about earlier, that you got some really cool, like, pyrotechnics yeah. and stunts. Yeah, yeah. And as a production designer, you know, how many conversations and what type of conversations are you having with those departments? Oh, uh, so, yeah, as a production designer, I mean, we're, we're talking to a lot of different departments, uh, too, in this role. So... Um, yeah, the pyrotechnics, uh, and, 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 and effects, uh, special effects. So uh, a lot of that has to deal with, um, on Wolfhound and specifically, um, we had to worry about props cause there's a, a lot of armory and, and firearms. So those not only had to be reset, but, um, you know, uh, all ready to go and all checked and, that's a bunch of different departments coming together, working together cohesively. Um, we have to make sure that uh, it's all staying together. Things are breaking. Things are, you know, exploding off walls. Um, if we have uh, set dressing, crates, barrels, um, you know, haystacks, cars, if th- if if they're getting lit on fire and, and things are exploding um, and the take didn't work, uh, that needs to be reset and needs to be reset quick. How many, how many resets do you get? Oh, it depends. Um, it depends how much time we got. It depends, uh, where the producer is. Uh, if, <laughs> if, it, if they're not on set, right, yeah, we keep if, going until we get If they're getting a coffee, we can get another one. <laughs> um, yeah, it depends on, uh, what the director saw, what he liked. Um, and, uh, if we have the materials for it, um, 
Yeah, it's, it's so many factors uh, go into a lot of different things. Yeah, like Brandon, that. be real with me. Yeah, uh-huh. how satisfying is it to see your work get blown up? Um, uh, supremely satisfying. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's 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 amazing how um, you can take so much time setting up something, uh, hours even, days even, um, just to have it uh, completely annihilated within uh, thirty five seconds. Uh, but it's massively satisfying. Yeah. Um, if the shot looks great. Oh, yeah. yeah you no, know. If the shot yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. look good, you're like, man, I wasted it. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I compared it to something akin of those um, domino artists on YouTube mm-hmm. who spend hours creating beautiful domino formations just yeah, yeah. to, like, right, yeah. knock it over. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're like, a, you're like a chef in that regard, right? Right, yeah. Create this beautiful dish, yeah. and then it's just gone. Yeah, gone. I mean, it's, yeah. It really just seemed like it is an underappreciated art. I mean, it, on a film set, everyone knows it. Everyone understands its value. Mm-hmm. But to an average audience, I guess the beauty is when it's done well, it doesn't stick out. Yeah. And that takes me into probably the biggest topic that I have for every department mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. and just how the landscape has shifted. And that is AI. Mm-hmm. How AI mm-hmm. is changing yeah. jobs, how it's um, you know, replacing them in some cases mm-hmm. and where people are where you yeah. are in your own career and how AI has affected you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, pretty wild topic right now. Um, so, uh, and, and actually a, a big reason why we just had the strike. So it, it affected us all, uh, with that. Um, but, um, so there's a lot of, uh, people, may it be, uh, if you're a fan of it, if you view it as uh, an enemy, friend or enemy, I feel like you should at least know it, uh, know about it. Um, it. You know, keep keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. Um, mm-hmm. I, I yeah yeah I but I don't I don't personally um, I was on the fence about it uh, a lot about it, uh, over time, but I uh, I'm not I don't feel necessarily threatened by it. Um, and I know we, we've talked about this a, a bit too. Uh, I think without a human element to it, um, it, it just flat out doesn't work um, like it does when uh, there's a human component. Um, you can look at uh, stuff created by production designers, by writers, by uh, directors, artists, and um, you can feel the humanity in it. Whereas if you look at an AI generated piece, may it be literature or, or visual, uh, by itself, there's something just not right about it. Um, the, the best pieces that I've seen, and I've seen some gorgeous work, uh, it's, it's tweaked a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, not, not even tweaked, just worked and reworked. And um, it's always got a human component to it. And and those are the those are the pieces that that end up working. So there's always that that human element, uh, and and without it, I, I just don't think it works. I'm so glad you said you're not threatened mm-hmm. because that is how I feel right now. Yeah. You know, looking at it and how it's um, playing out, mm-hmm. there's a lot of strong opinions, and mm-hmm. I think everyone's governed with how they feel. Yeah. Because you know when the internet started, people had strong opinions. Oh yeah. yeah. When phones became popular, strong feelings, and this is just a growing pain of our mm-hmm. species. Now, when it comes to AI in the film industry, you know, a lot of people were very, very um, convinced this would go for blue collar first. Mm -hmm. It attacking the crew, well, not even attacking, it just being geared towards the creative sector, I think caught a lot of people off guard, Mm -hmm. myself included. Right. But it's done some really incredible stuff. And I think it's streamlined other process. I mean, I'll be completely honest. This podcast is a product of AI. I've used it to help me kind of organize it, structure it, Mm -hmm. brainstorm. And that's where I think it's its strongest. Like I you said, so yeah. when you're playing creative tennis with the computer uh-huh. and the ideas back and forth, like Pong. Yeah. And the beauty of AI is it can create very quickly, mm. but it doesn't have nuance. Right. And you're an artist. You That's your whole bread and butter, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. That's your whole stick. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's nuance. Like the computer is going to do its best imitation, mm. but without a real artist, it doesn't work. So for up-and-coming filmmakers... I would encourage them to to use AI in mm-hmm. every facet, especially if you have no budget. It's going to help you get all these ideas out and then you can sift through it and see what lands. 
just because you can't afford to have a crew. It does. It, it opens a lot of doors, uh, especially for someone that's that's trying to create something that, yeah, doesn't have a budget and doesn't have uh, a million dollars for a, for a team of, uh, you know, a creative, uh, a whole creative network. Um, but like you were saying, yeah, if you you take that, you use it as a tool. It's not it's not an end ends means, you know, it's, 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 it's a tool that you can use, um, to, to better, to better your work, uh, or, or, or expand your boundaries. Um, but yeah, with, without it being, uh, you know, collaboration, it lacks. And I, you know, I think that's, man, it's such a, it is polarizing, Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but it is going to put us in a in a very creative spot where we have to realize that there really is nothing like the human mind, no. right? So mm-hmm. it's a tool and it should be used as a tool. For sure. And I think it's a great place for us to, to really leave this conversation. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate everything you've enlightened us with. Yeah. I would like to know what's next for Brandon. Oh, uh, what's next for me? So um, there is a, a, a feature coming up. Uh, so... Um, can't talk too much about it. Uh, still, well, details are still uh, being uh, figured out. But um, there's that on the horizon. Uh, I'm always looking for new people to network with, uh, as our industry does. Um, uh, always looking for uh, new stories uh, to to build, new worlds to build. Um, and then I'm also uh, always chiseling away at personal projects, maybe writing, um, and, uh, a feature that I'm, I'm setting up, uh, putting together for my grandfather who passed away 10 years ago. So I've been working on it for about 10 years. Um, but it's, it's something that I've been chiseling uh, away at for a while. And, uh, I'm finally getting to the point where, uh, I'm, I'm trying to bring that out of, um, pre-production into production. Um, so that it's, it's always projects, always things, uh, personal and, and commercial and industry, um, uh, always happening. Um, it never stops, but, um, that's how I like it. And then, um, yeah, but everything's updated online. I'm trying to, uh, now that, uh, things are kind of, um, going again after the strike, uh, I'm trying to update everything, uh, on, um, socials and online. And, and so if anyone wants to keep track, uh, of all that stuff or reach out, um, uh, that uh, you can just look up my name. Uh, yeah, Brandon F. Ottenbacher. Um, it's a pretty uh, pretty unique last name, so um, you'll find me if you put it in. Yeah. Awesome. And if you guys want to see Brandon's incredible work in the indie feature that was picked up by Lionsgate. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wolfhound yeah. in all of its World War II glory. Mm-hmm. You can find it on Tubi for free yeah. or um, Prime Video. Mm-hmm. A um, lot of explosions, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it was, um, it was a pleasure. It was such a pleasure chatting yeah, pleasure. with you. And thank you so much for that. Um, guys, that was our first episode. I'm so excited to share more with you. And again, just absolute gratitude for your time. Yeah, thank you. So that's been Let's Talk Motion Picture. Let's yeah. cut it.